Hello everyone, welcome to BBT Tech. Today we'll be looking at the GMMK Pro from Glorious. And if you guys haven't heard already, Glorious PC Gaming has been making some very bold claims on their first custom mechanical keyboard. They claim that there's nothing like this board available to buy in the market as the custom mechanical scene is still driven by group buys and these keyboards usually don't include all of the quote unquote desired custom keyboard features that Glorious is kidding their keyboard with. So a little about the GMMK Pro, it is going to be a gasket mounted keyboard with a 75% layout, which is made out of a fully CNC machined aluminum case with uh, per key RGB lighting, side lighting, as well as that infamous rotary knob that sparks a weirdly large interest when a custom keyboard is kitted with one. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get the keyboard itself, a pretty USB-C cable, a switch puller, and some optional extra gaskets, and Glorus's own GOAT stabilizers. Alongside of the, the GMMK Pro, Glorus is also dropping new accessories that provide the customers some versatility to change their layouts and customize their setups, starting with different plate options, gold cables, keycaps, additional knobs, a premium switch puller, and a nice carrying case. Now, back to the keyboard. Glorus is offering two colorway options at the time of filming, which is the black slate and white ice, which we have both on hand. And I do have to point out that upon unboxing the white ice, it honestly is more of a silver color rather than the white color shown in their renders, but it is close enough, I guess. So one of the great features of this keyboard is that the PCB is QMK compatible, and it's also coming with uh, VIA support in the near future. This means that all the keys are remappable and you're able to change the keyboard's layout with the limits of the plate holding you back. While this is a pretty standard feature for most custom keyboards, big box brands like Razer, Corsair, and Logitech lack this certain feature. So moving forward with the disassembly, first we must remove the knob which comes off relatively easy as it is held by friction and in order to disassemble the whole case, we need to start by removing the top screws from the bottom screws. Uh, just keep in mind that when removing the bottom of the case, we will see the daughter board and cable uh, piece that attaches to the PCB. And I do suggest you guys be pretty careful with this since this is probably the most fragile part of the keyboard. And Glorious doesn't provide any extras for the daughter board and the cable ribbon. Here we can take a good look at the gaskets that are present on the bottom and top of the case. And upon initial impressions, the gaskets seem to be pretty good with minimal damage from shipping and they're aligned fairly straight. If by any chance your guys' gaskets are not to your liking, you do have extra gaskets to make some changes. And the GMK Pro comes with a thin layer of foam for the bottom of the case, which is not really required for assembly, so you can pick whether you prefer a more muted sound that you would get from the uh, case foam or more of a hollow sounding board without the use of the case foam. Inspecting the PCB, it seems like they're using their in-house sockets, which can be seen on many of their previous keyboards in the past. So you guys don't have to worry too much about the quality or longevity of these sockets since this isn't their first time implementing this feature. I do have to point out though that I did find some imperfections on my PCB, which is likely due to manufacturing, but there was nothing too concerning about it since my PCB was working fine, all the key presses were registering, and the RGB lighting was working properly. Speaking of RGB lighting, the keyboard also is featuring a side lighting glow feature on the keyboard, which is diffused twice, once internally and another diffused at the top of the case, which provides a nice uniform look in my opinion. But I do have to knock some points off for Glorious's build quality since this segment of the aluminum is very thin and easily bendable. And I also have to point out that when I was reassembling the keyboard, I had a very difficult time getting the polycarbonate plate as well as the aluminum plate to screw in together with the PCB. And with many of my custom builds, I've never really had an issue installing a plate in PCB, but however, this keyboard was very troublesome. And once installation, I did notice that there was a lot of pressure being put on the PCB, which caused it to flex quite a bit. I can't be certain to say how this would affect the keyboard in the long run since I've only had this keyboard for a month now, but so far it has been fine. Now, taking a closer look at the GOAT stabilizers, we can see that they're pre-lubed out of the factory and they're utilizing a clear housing to aid with RGB lighting pass-through. For my first sound test, I will be testing the board with Glorus's own stock stabilizers, and then a second sound test with some more lubing on the stabilizers on my end using some Cryotox 205 Grade Zero. The keyboard in the sound test will be featuring some ABS keycaps and cream switches lubed with Cryotox 205 Grade Zero. Let's get to the sound test.
Unfortunately, these stabilizers are not that great after all. No matter how much lube I would use to tune these stabilizers, they always sound a little bit off, especially when you compare them to nicer stabilizers like C3s, Duroc's, or even the default Cherry stabilizers. But nevertheless, these stabilizers are replaceable and despite the long disassembly procedure, I do highly recommend you guys swap them out. For our builds today, we will be using the Bobo U4T's lube with the Tribosis 3 to a 4 and some Lube Novel Keys Cream Switches Lube with Crytox 205 Grade 0, which are both going on a polycarbonate plate. I do have to point out that the Glorious Aluminum plate seemed to have some compatibility issues with Durex stabilizers, which is what we ran into. However, the polycarbonate plate worked well without any issues. So let's get to the sound test. And there you guys have it. I think this keyboard sounds pretty good actually, especially uh, kitting it out with the uh, modest stabilizers and loop switches. I don't think you can go wrong with this keyboard. I feel like this keyboard is a great value option for many people out there, whether you're a keyboard enthusiast or someone just dipping their toes into this hobby for the first time and you don't want to break the bank. While I did have some issues with this keyboard ranging from its anodization claims, uh, some nicks here and there on the frame and some scratches on the PCB, at this price point, you're getting a fairly good sounding keyboard with minimal efforts on your end. And the pros certainly do outweigh the cons and I can safely recommend this keyboard to new users in the hobby. If you guys like what we're doing here, please feel free to hit that sub button and leave a like and maybe a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions or anything you want to say to me. I'll be sure to try my best to respond and hope you guys all have a great day. Bye bye.